What's up, everyone? Welcome into the Front Yard Fantasy Week 8 Waiver Wire Ads video. I am Simon here with my buddy Jay, and we are here to give you six different players that we think you should be adding to your fantasy football rosters in Week 8 off of the Waiver Wire. Jay, we are going to come to you for our first player that we're talking about today. Who's the first guy you think that people should be adding to their fantasy rosters this week? Well, as much as I don't like to talk uh, well about any of the Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles, I will say Kenneth Gainwell uh, has done pretty pretty good so far this season, and he's in line for some more work with Miles Sanders going down with an injury. Um, it did look really bad. He was carted off the field, but reports are as of today that it's just a lower ankle sprain, so he shouldn't be out for an extended period of time, but I do expect him to miss a few games. Um, and even before Sanders went down, Gainwell was involved in this offense. Um, he's averaging 9.3 points per game, which granted that was a few big games and a few duds, but that's basically what you would expect from a backup running back. Um, he's got some usage, though, that I'm excited about. Even being the backup, he's got the second most targets on the team with 31. He's tied for the second most catches with 19, and he's getting the, the high-value touches as well. Um, he's got five rece receptions in the red zone. He leads the team in receiving yards in the red zone with 56. And he's second to Jalen Hurts in rushing and total touchdowns in the red zone. He's got a great schedule coming up, going up against the Detroit Lions, who give up the second most fantasy points to opposing running backs. And then after that, the Chargers, who give up the six most. So especially in the short term, I think he's a great plug-and-play RB2 for as long as Miles Sanders is out. And even when Miles Sanders comes back, I think you have yourself a solid flex play. Jay, just to play devil's advocate a bit. So we saw Miles okay. Sanders go down, and in this Eagles game, Boston Scott then got seven carries um, whenever we really haven't seen him involved in this offense at all. Do you worry at all about Boston Scott's involvement and that maybe limiting the upside for a guy like Gainwell? Uh, not necessarily, because I think if they were looking to have uh, Boston Scott more involved before this, he would have been. Uh, he was basically... Gainwell is what everybody thought Boston Scott was going to be this year, and he leapfrogged him. So they like Gainwell, um, and the main source of Gainwell's value is his targets, is the uh, the receptions that he's getting. They're already using him in the red zone. So while I do think they will uh, be a tandem, I don't think it's going to be too much of a, a ding to Gainwell's value. Yep, I, I completely agree with you there. Gainwell's not going to get less involved with Miles Sanders. I'd expect Boston right. Scott to be more right, involved exactly. than he was previously. Uh, but don't expect all of the Miles Sanders work to get piled on the Gainwell. They, they will plug in Boston Scott a bit. But right, I, exactly. I love that pickup, Jay. Uh, I think that's a great one. Jay, the next player I want to talk about is also a running back, but this is one that is likely available in every single one of your leagues. Now, he is not as high value of a waiver target as Kenneth Gainwell, but I think if you are really desperate for a running back start, this is a guy you can go to, and that is Brandon Bolden of the New England Patriots. Now, he does not very involved as a rusher, but he has been quite involved as a pass catcher uh, recently for this New England offense. In four of the last five games, he's gotten at least four targets, and then in this last week, he got seven targets, six catches for 79 receiving yards. Just alone, those targets are interesting as a pickup in the barren running back landscape right now. But adding to that, on Sunday, Ramondre Stevenson was a very confusing, healthy scratch for the Patriots. Um, that clears up some room in that running back room for a guy like Brandon Bolden to find continued success. I'm not out here saying he's an every week plug and play, but he is a guy that is getting target volume. And that is very valuable, especially in PPR formats. Well, I love the pickup, and a point to what you were saying, yes, he's not the, the high-value pickup that Gainwell is, but I was on with our buddy Sheehan today, and he made a really good point. Make the moves for the players before the blow-up happens. That way you don't have to blow that fab. So I really like it. You're chasing the production. You're chasing the targets and trying to make that pickup before you have to go out and spend your fab on it. So I really like that move. Absolutely agree. And we have seen Patriots utilize pass catching bats very effectively for fantasy in the past. Um, no one's calling for this guy to be the next James White, but they, they know how to use pass catching running backs. And that's exactly what Bolden's going to be for them going forward. Jay, who is your next guy that we're going to be talking about? So this guy was actually a pretty popular pickup last week, but I still think he's a good pickup. And I'm going to go with the sun god, Amon Ross St. Brown. <sighs> yes, he did disappoint this past week, but if you dig a little deeper, it makes sense. He had a goose egg in week seven, but he plays the majority of his snaps in the slot. Who is the slot cornerback for the Los Angeles Rams? Some guy named Jalen Ramsey. And I would say he's probably pretty good. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Um, yeah, he's good. So, but uh, <laughs> weeks four through six, he had 18 catches, 23 targets, and a touchdown. He was averaging 12 points per game. 
Uh, the, the Lions are desperate for somebody to emerge as the wide receiver one in this offense. This is definitely not a, a high upside pickup. This is more of a bi-week fill-in, somebody who, you know, you could feel pretty confident that if if they're get, if he continues to get the target share that he was getting weeks four through six, he could very easily get to that double-digit point threshold. And he's probably going to be dropped in a lot of places. So this might be one of those pickups that you make after waivers run. Um, if he's already rostered, because I think there's going to be a lot of people who are upset with his performance from this week. I, I completely agree with that. I think even people that picked him up last week, if you're in a league where he was picked up last week, there's a very real chance he ends up back on waivers this week. So that's a name to absolutely watch out for. And I just wanted to add, in case people are nervous about the emergence of Khalif Raymond this past weekend, yes, that was an unbelievable game by him. And he has been getting targets in this offense, but that doesn't mean Amon Ra is suddenly going to disappear. They have been utilizing him all season. Don't take that one game as a prognosticator for the rest of the year. Look at look at how much he's been targeted. I, I think that's a really great pickup, Jay. Yeah, I don't think Raymond is going to eclipse the sun god. Uh, you like uh, that? Uh, no. Nope. Moving on. <laughs> uh, we're going to stay on the wide receiver position, though, and we are going to go over to the Rams and talk about Van Jefferson. And first of all, can I just say I'm. I'm so happy that we're talking about Van Jefferson as like a yeah, real absolutely. pickup right now. I, I loved that player coming out of college, and I'm so excited to see him getting the targets now. Um, but Van Jefferson, I think, is a very good pickup going into this week. Uh, he's been getting more and more involved in this offense. He's gotten six or more targets in three of the last five games. And in this last game, he eclipsed Robert Woods in target share. Now, it was w just one game. And I don't think he will see more targets than Robert Woods rest of season. But what that tells me is that they want him to be involved as that like pivotal third receiving option on this offense. Uh, I'm buying in. He's unbelievably talented. And if he's getting six targets a game, that's a player I want in my fantasy lineup. No, absolutely. I think it's a great call. You know, uh, you start to put players in your lineups that you wouldn't necessarily think about at the beginning of the year when it comes to these bye weeks and the injuries and things like that. So you know, give me a guy who's getting some targets, who's a, a big play threat in one of the best offenses in the entire league. I absolutely love it. I think you could do a lot worse. And just to add to that, it's not like he got those six targets, but he wasn't on the field. He was on the field almost that entire game. It was over 95% of snaps that Van Jefferson was out there. Um, that's a great sign for a player that you're picking up off of waiver wires. Jay, no, who's your next guy that we're going to be talking about here? So the last player for me is going to be a little bit of a deeper dive, but I'm going to go with Michael Gallup of the Dallas Cowboys. Um, he was activated off the pup list this week. I don't know if he's going to come back and play, but this is the type of move that, you know, if you have an extra bench spot that you want to throw somebody a lottery ticket, you know, throw them, in, throw them on there and see, you know, uh, this offense is one of the best in the NFL. Granted, they aren't throwing as much as they were last season, but uh, week one, he did have seven targets. He had four catches for 36 yards. So it wasn't too impressive, but Give me – this is one of the offenses that I want any piece of. Uh, Michael Gallup did have a, a pretty decent season last year. Um, if anything were to happen to C.D. Lamb or Amari Cooper, which hopefully it does not, but he would automatically vault into wide, re wide receiver two status uh, for me. So I, I think he's got flex, uh, flex value even before then, and he's one of those guys, like I said, give me a piece of this offense uh, just about any way I can get it. Yep, I really have nothing to add on that one, Jay. I, I love this Dallas offense, and I want as many pieces as we can, even if they are throwing the ball less than last year. And it helps that we've seen Michael Gallup be a very successful fantasy wide receiver in the past. He, he's a talented wide receiver with a talented quarterback on a high-powered offense. Those are the guys you pick up off the waiver wire. Absolutely, and he's got a great schedule going uh, going down the rest of the season. Uh, it, Atlanta, Kansas City, Vegas, New Orleans, Washington, New, New York, Washington – and Arizona's the last one. That's a tough one. But, I mean, there's a stretch in there that get, I think this offense could just go ballistic. So I want every piece of it. I completely agree, Jay. We are going to stay on the wide receivers and a bit on the uh, deeper dives for this last one for me as well. Uh, I want to talk about Alan Lazard for the Green Bay Packers. Uh, now, this one honestly was a late addition to my waiver wire ads today. And it came after the Devontae Adams news. The Devontae Adams was placed on the COVID reserve list. Now, usually I have zero interest in any of the secondary receiving options for the Green Bay Packers. It seems like you're just spinning a wheel and hoping that that's who Aaron Rodgers picks to throw the ball to a couple times in that game. 
But with Devontae Adams out, Alan Lazard is the most interesting option for me out of the secondary receiving options there in Green Bay. Uh, he saw his highest snap share this past week, and he's been trending up in targets. He got five targets this last week with Devontae Adams on the field. Aaron Rodgers trusts this guy, likes this guy. And if Devontae Adams is out, which he's expected to be, uh, I can't imagine him not being very involved in this offense. This is a short-term ad, though. As soon as Devontae Adams is back, I want nothing to do with Alan Lazard. But if you need a spot start this week, he's a perfect addition. No, I completely agree, and I think you hit the nail on the head. Uh, if it wasn't for the Devonta Adams news, uh, I would not want any part of him. It's just like the wide receiver two in Kansas City. You know, it feels like you're you're chasing last week's production, and then it's some other random guy on the team. So, but if Devonta Adams is out, I think uh, Lazard is a great start this week. Yep, guys, that is going to be it for our week eight waiver wire ads video. Those are six players that we think are worth adding to your fantasy lineups in week eight. We will be back next week with week nine waiver wire ads. So make sure to tune in then. Until then, adios, everybody. See ya.